can't just say he's sinful because he's not like me. But we're going to go back to the traditions, are we not? We're going to go back to the Islamic traditions. We're going to go back to their own material. We're going to unpack their own material. And we're going to let those traditions speak for themselves. We're not making this up. We will source everything we say, and everything that we're going to read comes from Sahih Bahadi, Sahih Muslim, Al Tabari. Who are these people? Who is Bahadi? Who is Muslim? Who is Al Tabari? Who are these individuals? According to Islamic tradition, they are the most reliable sources for Muslim. But here is my problem, Jay. Would you consider someone who took the life of other people? Because hunger for the money, because love for the money, to be perfect or to be sinful. Now you haven't proved that yet. You're just saying things off the top of your head. Show me where you can say that Muhammad had a love of money. Show me where you can say that Muhammad killed people. Show me where you can say these things, because that talk is cheap. Support what you just said. Source what you just said. I don't need to source that. All I need to do is go to the earliest biography of Muhammad, Ibn Hisham. Ibn Hisham. It is. It is according to the Hisham, Muhammad tortured men called Kinana because he was so, so, and so wanted his money. He tortured him, he tortured him. It was very, very similar what Mafia does. Okay, mafia so. says, just a moment, Jay, Mafia says, would you please give me your money? And then you say, no, sorry, I don't want to give you my money. Okay. And then Mafia comes with the bad guy this time. What do I do? Give me your money. All right. Ma man says, no. What my fa Mafia does? Tortured people. Yeah. Tortured people oh. until they find out where the money is. Yeah. That's what Muhammad, Muhammad did the Kinara How do you know that? Seven centuries. How do you know that? According to the biography of Muhammad, Ibn 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 So let's go back to Ibn Ibn Let's go back to page 515. And let's read it from the authoritative source. You read it, Jay. Your read? English is very good. Okay. One of the leaders of Kaiba, Muhammad, wanted him to reveal where some buried treasure was hidden. Just a moment, just a moment. this Kaiba? This man, Kinan. Just a moment. What Muhammad wants? Muhammad wants to know where the money is. Muhammad wants to know where the money is. Muhammad is in a Jewish tribe. Muhammad already killed people. Now, all Muhammad left is with a man who knows where the money is. Okay, hold on a minute. Is Muhammad from Khaibar? No, Muhammad was a guest to that. So Muhammad he was a guest. This them. was not even his city. Was Kinana from Khaibar? Was Kinana from Khaibar? Was Kinana from Khaibar? Yes. So he was a native. He was from the, he was from the uh, tribe of... Uh, so what was Muhammad doing in Kaibat to begin with? It wasn't Mo even his town. Muhammad was there to get rid of Jewish people and take their land. So Kinana was a Jew. Yes. He is from the... Ibn, which family is it? Ibn Nadir family. Ibn Nadir family. Shall I show okay. to you? That's fine. That's okay. fine. Uh, that's fine. Banu Nadir, the Ibn yes. Banu Nadir. Yes. So we got the Banu Nadir or Ibn Nadir. This is the second family that was thrown out of Medina. Remember, they already were thrown out of Medina in 625. Now this is 628. They've been thrown out and they've been sent up to Khaibar. So he comes up to them in Khaibar. He's already thrown them out of Medina. And Kinana is the one in charge of the money for the Jews. So should we read what happened next? Yes, Jay. Remember he asked, tell me, no, he's asking very nicely, since Muhammad is the best example to mankind at all times, as well as he is the perfect for humanity. Asking very nicely. Asking very nicely. 
asking I want you to like listen this. and see if this is the best example. And I'm sad of the way chocolate bar the money is. We'll ask her if this is the best example. Kinana Al-Rabi, who had the custody of the treasure of Banu Nadir, was brought to the apostle who asked him about it. He denied that he knew where it was. A Jew came to the apostle, according to Al-Tabari, and said that he had seen Kinana going around a certain rune every morning early. When the apostle said to Kinana, do you know that if we find you have it, I shall kill you? Kinana replied, yes. The apostle gave orders that the ruin be excavated and some of the treasure was found. When he asked them about the rest, he refused to produce it. So that the apostle gave orders to Al-Zubair Al-Awam. So he tells Al-Zubair Al-Awam, torture him until you extract what he has. So he kindled a fire with the flint and steel on his chest until he was nearly dead. So he put a fire on his chest until he was nearly dead. Then the apostle delivered him to Muhammad bin Maslama and he struck off his head in revenge for his brother Mbahdu. Can I break it down? So here's, here's what happens. Men whom supposed to be the best example to humanity, yeah. as well as mercy to the world, yeah. says, torch him until you find where the money is. Torture him until you find the, where the money is. He doesn't speak. They torture him. They torture him. That wasn't enough. They put a fire on his chest. That wasn't enough. That wasn't enough. They chopped his head off. Is that the man you want to follow? Is that the man you want to follow, sir? Ask him, ask him. Ask him, ask him. Ask him, ask him. Ask him. He's been heckling. Nice to see you. But what we just read, is that relevant for today? Well, nobody, nobody thinks that kind of behavior is acceptable these days. How about any day? Well, they used to do things like that a lot, and they thought it was okay. So, in the seventh century Arabia, it was okay. Well, sir, do you think it's okay for someone who claims to be the man of God torture you for your money, torture you for your money, torture you for your money, and put fire on your chest and kill you for your money? I don't think it's acceptable at all, but there are people in the islands of New Guinea who think it's acceptable to eat people. How about for London? We live in London here. Definitely not. Is it good for any place besides London? No, definitely not. And why do you say not? What is it that you're going to for your morality, for your moral standards? Well, I'm going to Jesus and I'm going to the Christian tradition. I don't know who you are. We've never met before, have we? No, that's where I'm going. So you are using Jesus as an example. We're looking at Muhammad. What is it about Jesus that is superior to Muhammad here? Well, when, when the lady, when the woman caught in adultery was brought to Jesus and they said to him, look, she should be stoned because that's in our law. And he said to them, said, which of you is without sin? Whoever is without sin, you cast that first stone. And they all went away because they were ashamed. And that's the principle of Christian civilization. There you go. That's in chapter 7 of John, verse 52, to John chapter 8, verse 11. So that story you know very well. And that's the story you prefer, right? That's the way to behave. But isn't that much older than the Quran? I suppose it is. It's about six to seven hundred years older. It should be more barbaric, shouldn't it be? If man is getting better and better, why is it that what Jesus did in the first century AD, from your opinion, is better than what Muhammad did in the seventh century AD? 628 to be exact. There was a man called Waraka bin Nawlaf, wasn't there? You've heard of him. He, he married Khadija and Muhammad, and he was some kind of a Nestorian Christian. You know about Waraka ibn Nawfal was the uncle of, of Khadija, that's correct. That's, 
that's it. And, and he evidently did not transmit the whole gospel to Muhammad. Evidently, he didn't get to Matthew 24, even though he was translating Matthew. If only he got to chapter 24, that would have shut down Muhammad. He would have seen Muhammad is not a prophet. But on this particular point that Hutton's bringing up, should we go to another city, let's say come to London, Go to people who are Jews or anybody who is, because they were the ones in responsibility who has in that money. city. They have money, which is rightly theirs. They were hiding the money, which they can do. Should you come to London from another city, demand that they give you the money, and if you don't give the money, then you torture them, put fiery brands on their chest, and then cut off their head. Is that relevant for today? No. Categorically, no. Yet this is the greatest example. This is the model for all Muslims. You cannot dispute with Muhammad. And we're reading from his own biography. This is a biography written by Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Isham, page 515. Muslims, read it. And then come back to me and tell me how you can follow that model. How can you follow that man? I prefer Jesus, don't you? Well, um, yes. What did Jesus say? about killing anybody. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 and 44, he said, you have heard it say to love your friends and hate your enemies. Verse 44, but I always say to love your enemies. And that's why I love Muslims. Hatun, do you love them? Oh, well, God of Bible loves them enough to give his son for them. Of course we do love them, Jay. We want them to come to the true love. We want them to come to the truth. But let me ask the question. Why is Muhammad supposed to be the mercy to the world? And best example to humanity. Can someone, one of Muslims, please justify for me? What kind of best example thinks it's all right to torture people for their money as well as torture them, torture them, torture them, and put fire in their chest. But why? Because he wants their money. What is the difference between the Prophet of Islam versus the Mafia gangs today? What is the difference, Muslims? Can you see? They don't want to answer this. Sit down with him. Of course, Jay. If I was Muslim, I couldn't defend Muhammad. Therefore, what we see is Muslims come to speakers' corner with their running shoes so they can run away quicker. We cannot. If you are Muslim, you have nothing to hold on. All you have is last the biography of Muhammad, whom you follow. It's not only Muhammad tortured people because he wanted their money. He went further and he took their wives as slave to him and his men. Now have you noticed? And he raped them in front of their husbands. He doesn't want to talk about Muhammad anymore. He's already trying to get onto the Bible. He's already changing the subject. And this is telling to me. Because when you cannot defend Muhammad, who else do you have as a model? If Muhammad is the only model Muslim have, Today, yesterday, from the seventh century, today, here, everywhere, if he's the only model you have, yeah. and we're reading these from his biography, we didn't write this, did we? We didn't La make this up. Last time when I checked, I wasn't Ibn Hisham, and you weren't Ibn Hisham. I'm not Ibn Hisham, he died in 833, in the ninth century. Yeah, and he you, wrote you are this much down. younger. I'm much younger than him, thank you. God. Quite a few centuries younger than him. So, I have a problem, Muslims, and you know you have a problem. And you know one day you will be accountable for those basic questions. I am just being ground for you to practice your answers because before you end up in hell, Muslims. So, so that's what? the first problem. The first problem is I he has to, so but we want to do one as another okay. so that we can put them up one sequence after another. 
Is there another problem with Muhammad? We see, first of all, that he has to ask forgiveness for sins. That is in the Quran. We looked at three different references for that, but mostly chapter 48, 1 and 2. We looked then at Sahih Buhari, Sahih Muslim, and we also looked at Ibn Hisham to show that he wanted money from extracting it from a Jew living in Khaibah.